All right, so now that I've got all of the components stripped out of the Tesla itself, I wanna start taking inventory of every single component that I have. I wanna start breaking things down. I wanna start finding locations on the car. I really wanna get into the nitty gritty of what I took apart from that Tesla. So uh, there's a few things that I might not be able to use. I was told uh, by, by Nick over at uh, Classic EV Resto that those older Model S battery chargers they don't like to play nice. <laughs> so I might end up going with something aftermarket with those battery chargers. But uh, what I do have now, obviously I need to start taking apart, cleaning, restoring, rebuilding, inventorying. So naturally I wanna start with the biggest part, which is the battery itself. So I've already kind of started to, to take it apart. This is hands down the scariest part of this build. This is a 400 volt battery bank and it is considered high voltage so i've already started to take it apart and, and i think what i'll do is i'll take this front front cap off first i've watched several videos on youtube of people dismantling these so i'm just gonna wear my high voltage gloves I'm going to take my time I'm gonna wear my rubber shoes and stay grounded so yeah let's get into it Okay, so I was able to peel off <laughs> the top portion of the battery. It is, uh, it's cooked. But anyway, this thing looks like something out of a spaceship. I'm just kind of slowly going through and, and taking apart all of the uh, connectors and the bus bars. They're all just a 13 millimeter bolt. So I've taken one off so far. This one will come next, and then I'm just going to slowly work my way down, just taking my time and making sure I'm double gloved up. <laughs> So I finally completed stripping down the Tesla Model S battery. It's completely gutted at this point. I'll show you guys kind of where I stand. But my next steps are essentially going to be taking these uh, individual 16 Tesla modules and trying to figure out where they're going to live inside the chassis. So let's take a look at what's left of the battery. You can see it's completely gutted. I still, 
I might come in here and steal some of these aluminum tubes in case I end up using them on my battery bank. And then those mica sheets I still need to remove. But these are, this is 10 of the 16 Model S modules. Here is six of them. So I'm, I'm kind of starting to mock up what my battery bank's gonna look like, but I'll kind of show you guys my thought process. Um, if you're doing a, a Tesla swap, these cardboard boxes from Westside EV are an absolute must. <laughs> they don't weigh anything. Those guys weigh like 56 pounds or something. So anyway, my thought process is to try to get this battery as low as possible into the chassis so that I can keep my center of gravity low. But essentially what I'm gonna do here is stack six here. So two, four, six, it's gonna give me about 14 inches in height and then stack the other 10, so five high, two across, and it's gonna give me right below this line here. So I'll still be able to utilize my, my rear window here, but yeah, I think it's gonna fit in there really well. You know, we, we've gotta remember, <laughs> We got to remember that the factory Lambo has a 6.5 liter V12 in it. So there's plenty of space back there. Uh, I'm feeling very fortunate because some people that are doing these Tesla swaps are like having to jam these battery back banks like all over the place. But I'm very, very lucky in the sense that, that the engine bay is massive. I'll be able to fit it in there. No problem. Two motors and 16 of these batteries. So I'm going to start cutting up the aluminum and start getting things tack welded. So the bottom of the battery box is just about done. Just finished welding the bottom of all this. And I did do some stitch welds inside, so very strong. It's not gonna go anywhere. So essentially the, the bottom of that's gonna house six of the modules. And you can see I've already started to clear out this whole center section. You can see all the stuff I've been cutting out to make it fit just right. So that bottom section is, is gonna kind of come in at an angle hit the bottom there and kind of slope up so uh, i shot it high it's about half an inch too high but i want to get i want to get the modules in there with some really good spacing in between them so i can float them in and they're not resting on each other so moving right along with the battery box you can see it's starting to shape up really nice um, this back area is going to be for the the cooling system so i'm going to eventually make this a removable cover to service uh, i bent up these little these brackets here and got them welded up there was a really good spot on the factory lambo that already had some some uh, inserts there let's see that so made it really easy for me to just make the mounts but you can see how wide open it is there again very fortunate such so engine big of an engine bay but i I 3D printed these spacers to kind of get a better idea of what I needed to space these battery packs out. Essentially, you don't want them resting on top of each other. You want a little tiny air gap. You kind of see that there, but you want a little tiny air gap in between these. Uh, just enough so that the mic can fit in there. You know, and and again, you don't want these, you don't want those resting on each other. If you haven't seen one of these up close, they're kind of cool. Essentially, they're just a bunch of tiny cells. You can see them in there. And they have these little tiny jumpers that connect it to kind of the this main this main grid here. So 
But moving right along, I am going to finalize these welds. Some of these welds came out pretty solid, but finalize this box, get it in there, and then start working on the other 10 modules that will eventually take up this space. I started working on the top portion. Got some really big stitch welds in to kind of hold it on place. And then I'll eventually put a cap on top of this and then a face. But that top section essentially sits on top of this one. And for now, you can see I've just got it temporarily screwed in because when I do finally combine those two, that battery pack, in order to get it out, I have to remove the entire subframe. So, um, yeah, but I'll kind of show you guys where it sits. Hopefully this is a good angle. Okay, so you can see how well that fits in there. I mean, it's really, really tight, tight everywhere. But I'm gonna put a bracket here. You can see how tight everything is here, I mean. <laughs> but better than loose, I guess. Okay, so I pulled the box out of the car. You can kind of see where I'm going with this thing. But it's starting to look really, really good. I'm really happy with it. Um, I mentioned earlier about this, these temporary screw. They're just there to hold this cap in place. When, I, when I'm ready, I'll weld this whole seam together. And then I can't put the box back in the car until I remove the rear subframe. But... Yeah, it's looking really good. I'm really happy with it. I'm going to be making some access panels here and here so that when I get ready to do the plumbing on the cooling system for the batteries, if you didn't know, they're cooled with glycol, but when I get ready to do the plumbing for the, the battery system, I, I'll be able to remove the panel and, and do that all. So I don't want to shoot myself in the foot here. I'm going to be doing the same thing in the front so that the bus bars, uh, top and bottom, I'll have access to as well. So I, I was going to put all the battery packs on there, but I don't trust this table. <laughs> Just with this amount, I mean, you're looking like at 100, 100, 100, 100, 400 pounds sitting there, maybe 450. So I went with a, a 3 16 thick aluminum. It's a 50-51. Should be plenty strong for the 900 pound-ish. Uh, final weight for that battery pack so yeah a lot of work so far i think i'll go ahead and get this episode out so i don't start losing followers <laughs>
But uh, I think on the next episode, I'll finalize that battery. I've got some really cool ideas to 3D print some bumpers and some accessories that go on the battery. I found some really, really good engineering like level 3D printing filament. Um, there's a, some stuff called PA6CF, uh, ASACF. So I'm gonna be trying a couple of different 3D prints to make some bumpers and some brackets so that the box looks, uh, looks really good. So uh, I think that's it. I'm gonna put this out and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one.